After using the highly regarded MSU fertilizer from Michigan State University for three years, I switched to Rain Mix because I am in Europe. Seeing as importing the MSU fertilizer into Europe comes with some hefty import tax, the closest match to MSU is Rain Mix, which is somewhat readily available in Europe if you can find it in your country at a garden center or if you just so happen to live close to a Cairn Orchids in Belgium where you can pick it up yourself without having to pay for shipping. Since a Cairn Orchids sent me a large tub of rain mix back in 2021, coordinated by Tokyo World Mark, I have been using it for the past two years. I am down one year to using rain mix for exactly the same time frame as the MSU fertilizer, but I feel that I can do a comparison between the two. Just in case you are in Europe, just in case you have doubts about rain mix and question if it's really as good as MSU, or maybe you're just looking for a fertilizer for your orchids but aren't sure which one to get. Let me tell you how I feel about the two and what I think based on having used both for an extended period of time. Yes, you may have guessed that this video is kind of targeted towards the European orchid growing community. So if you're still here and are not in the EU, let me tell you that I appreciate your support so much. Watching the video or listening as it is more of a podcast information delivery, even if it may not pertain to your specific interest, really means a lot to me. And for that, I thank you. Now, I happen to be in Spain and I cannot find rain mix locally. So I would have to go to Portugal to buy myself some. <laughs> that is the closest country that I know of that stocks rain mix on the shelves. Well, it just so happens that that kind of a shopping trip is not realistic at the moment. So I contacted Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents to see if she would be so kind to put some rain mix on her shopping list for me. My plan for the 2023 growing season was to up my fertilizer concentration to accommodate the big orchids that I have and well I have run out of rain mix. Not only did Fernanda organize the rain mix for my orchids but <laughs> Christmas came early and it turns out that my orchids are set with their meal plan for the coming 12 months. Now that is just insane Fernanda. Thank you so much for going through the trouble of sourcing rain mix for me but on top of that to gift it to the orchids I cannot express how grateful I am and how much I appreciate this generous gift. Obrigado. You've just heard me say that what I've unboxed will last me 12 months. Well, in total, I have 1.2 kilos here. I prepare my fertilizer buckets at a PPM of 600 during the growing season and have repeat need to fill the reservoirs for six months of the year during the week. At least two times, and that would apply to approximately 150 orchids in pots. The other are bare root mounts that get misted several times a day or in orchid tops where I have to fill the dish several times a day. I have had a one kilo tub arrive back in 2021 and it was empty 24 months later. The reason it lasted longer than what I am stating for the 1.2 kilos that I have now is because my parts per million levels were at 300 parts per million as a maximum and repeat filling of reservoirs. While they were the same, I was using exactly half the amount compared to what I used in the 2023 season. So how does that compare to the MSU? I mentioned that I used MSU for three years before switching to rain mix and well, it lasted lasted longer because I had smaller orchids which while I used 300 parts per million as a maximum concentration I diluted that down to 100 parts per million more often because many of my orchids were not the size they are now. So comparing the two when it comes to the yield, I would say that they are the same. Keep in mind that in the years I was using MSU, I also had more orchids. I have lost a lot of orchids since, but the lower parts per million spread across a larger collection compared to the higher parts per million and lesser orchids equals the yield out. I did find one thing really interesting though. Once I knew how many parts per million the MSU would be when adding one scoop or two scoops of MSU in the same amount of water, my findings are that the rain mix had a higher parts per million count after the same measurement had diluted in the same quantity of water. So I would need a little less of the rain mix than I would of the MSU. While I needed two scoops of MSU for 100 parts per million in a bucket, I would need one of the rain mix. So as I went about my business with 
switching to Rainmix, I have a question from Joseph Rupp that I would like to finally address in a video. Joseph asked me a while ago if, after using an orchid fertilizer for a while, it's okay to switch to a different fertilizer in the context of use of different fertilizers in the fertilizer application regime across time. As an analogy, as humans we get tired of the same food if we keep being served the same thing for a very long time, we kind of get sick of it. So I took this question as, do the orchids get tired of the same food if the fertilizer applied is applied over an extended period of time and would they perform better if the fertilizer is switched out for a different one every once in a while? If you've asked yourself the same question, my answer, my opinion is no. As long as your orchids are getting a well-balanced fertilizer that includes all the micro and macronutrients, your orchids will be happy. They won't know the difference between one or the other. Also, as long as the values of the ingredients are similar as well as the chemical composition of the new fertilizer that you're switching to or are interested in switching to. Not on the topic, but let me just add this. There are no fertilizers out there that actually boost blooming. An orchid will bloom to its full potential according to its genetics when the time is right for it to bloom. No bloom boosting fertilizer will make it perform better for what that is worth. The differences between MSU and Rain Mix are based on my observation as the one who mixes the concentration and how either one behaves with the water, the pH, and how many parts per million I have in the bucket with the same amount of water using the same quantity of each product. I found that MSU diluted completely. Two or three stirs of the bucket and every single particle was nicely diluted, whereas Rain Mix, no matter how much I stirred, I would always have a little residue that was circling at the bottom, even hours and hours later. That residue would sometimes require me to clean out my misters because the particles would get stuck. Not a major issue, but I was always wondering what it is that is not diluting. I think it is the coating that the rain mix has around the granules, but that's just a guess. However, it could be a good guess because of what I will mention later. Anyway, the instructions on rain mix do not say that the fertilizer needs to be added to warm water to dilute completely, for what that's worth. I thought I would add that observation in just in case you use rain mix and have the same happening. Let me know in the comments if you have the same tiny undiluted the residue at the bottom of your bucket. I'd be super interested. And also, what do you think it is? Thank you for that in advance. Now a little word of warning here, <laughs> both products being water soluble, be very, very careful with how long they are exposed to the ambient air. But, and this is why I think that the residue that remains at the bottom of my buckets when using rain mix is the coating around the granules. Rain mix is not as sensitive to absorbing the moisture in the air as MSU is. Even if not a single drop of water gets into the plastic bag within the tub, the MSU eventually turns liquid. Not a fluid liquid, but there is a disintegration of the outer coating of the granules with MSU that creates a paste-like substance. Of course, if the bag is smaller, then it may not happen, but I had the larger size one pound bags shipped, and even if I had separated the quantity out for, say, what I need for six months, once the container is open, MSU is like a sponge, and the remainder of the product would also be quick to absorb moisture unless you have a vacuum pack that sucks the air out while storing what you're not needing. And I do not have such a gizmo. On top of that, I'm in an extremely dry climate. So imagine what MSU will do if you have high humidity in your environment. However, a vacuum seal gizmo is what you would need to ensure that MSU does not get wet while stored once the container has been opened. Rain mix, while it also absorbs moisture from the air, it was still in granules when I reached the bottom of the bag two years later. A few clumps had developed but it was not disintegrating. So whatever coats the granules on the rain mix, that is what I believe is the residue remaining at the bottom of the bucket. My opinion. And if you have the same situation and drew other conclusions, once again, please put those in the comments. I'd be happy to read how it works for you. And not just me. Many people might come to the comments of this video and would like to have feedback from other observations, including the MSU. So type away. Let's get the information out there for as many people as possible.
Moving on to the comparison now, both products regulate to the ideal pH no matter how strong the concentration. MSU and Rain Mix both dial in at around 6.4 to 6.7 in my case, and depending on what I want to achieve with the absorption of nutrients, I use a pH down product to reduce the pH to 5.8. Very rarely do I use a pH up. Sometimes I do, depending on, let's say, the mounts. If the mounts are a little bit degraded, I up the pH just to maximize the absorption of the nutrients. So to have the pH kind of dial in automatically is very handy. It is a time saver and you don't have to mess with the pH meter every time you prepare your fertilizer. Also a little side note, MSU turns your water to a pretty aqua blue that intensifies in color depending on the strength of your solution, whereas Rain Mix has a red dye which also intensifies the stronger the solution gets. Another thing that differentiates the potential efficacy or the lack thereof of Rain Mix is they have one formula and one formula only, which is especially developed for use with rainwater, reverse osmosis water, or soft city water. And for me, the definition of soft city water is anything up to or less than 100 parts per million of what comes out of your faucet. So that is the optimal for Rain Mix to work at its full potential. However, MSU has two formulas. One is specifically for well water or hard water. So the hard water definition in this case, I would define it to be anything above 100 parts per million that comes out of your faucet. But they also have a separate formula specific for rainwater, reverse osmosis water or soft city water. So that makes me think, how efficient is Rain Mix when used with any other water because I have to use reverse osmosis water with my orchids, seeing as my city water has something toxic in it that destroys orchid roots. But you will understand why I'm asking myself this question because of the following statement on the Rain Mix webpage. It states, and I will quote from their webpage, which is linked in the description of the video, following an article published in the American journal Orchids of June 2003 regarding the development of a new well-balanced orchid fertilizer, the so-called MSU fertilizer of the Michigan State University, we have, together with a few selected orchid amateurs, redone the tests over a two-year period and this with results beyond expectation. This well-balanced orchid fertilizer that we offer you today is the result of more than 10 years of research and this is me adding on, they are referring to their product, their product being Rain Mix. But they went with a single MSU formula. They did not adapt to formulas. So keep that in mind if you go to their webpage. If you want to purchase some Rain Mix for yourself, make sure that you have the cleanest water in order for this fertilizer to do its thing as it was manufactured to do. And keep in mind that the MSU formula specific for well water was designed around the well water found at Michigan State University. So not all well water is the same, which is something to be mindful of if using the well water MSU formula and you're not connected to a city water supply. I can't speak for Rain Mix, but I think it makes perfect sense that they didn't want to adapt a second formula for something like well water or city water because of the variables in well water. Just keep that in mind, especially when you're ordering MSU fertilizer, that you make sure that you select the right one for the water that you are using. And also think about rain mix if you're going to get that and you are using well water or city water that you know maybe you should get something that's a little bit more cleaner unless your parts per million are lower than 100 parts per million because that is as clean as it's going to get. When I consider water being soft and clean 100 parts per million is the max. Just keep that in mind as you buy the products. Your results may differ a little bit depending on what kind of water you're using for your orchids. Now, money, money, money. <laughs> the price comparison for MSU and Rain Mix for one kilo of MSU fertilizer as per the supplier's webpage, which I have linked in the description, the cost for two pounds, which is the conversion that I did, is 39.95 US dollars, which equates to 37.79 euros. Two pounds converts to one kilo so one kilo of rain mix costs 16.98 euros, which converts to approximately 17.98 US dollars. That does not include shipping. And I have to say from a consumer's point of view, the price difference is astounding. 
A quick disclaimer. The cost of MSU may vary depending on which website you visit. I chose to go to the direct source for my references and the supplier sells one pound bags. I just doubled the cost to match the one kilo tub of rain mix that we can get as a maximum in Europe. So for the Europeans who may not have explored the rain mix option because of possibly being under the impression that it is too expensive, personally I find the price versus yield for rain mix very, very reasonable for an orchid fertilizer that has everything our orchids need if we don't want to fuss with supplements. I have also linked the Rain Mix supplier's webpage in the description. And both brands can be applied to organic or inorganic media. There is no distinction that any of these brands need to have a specific type of media to do the job. Again, just keep in mind that MSU has two formulas for different water quality. Plus the little added detail of MSU gearing their well water and city water formula to their well water and there are variables with every water wherever you are. So that was the vanilla comparison out of the way. Let's get into a little more detail on the chemical composition of the two. Let's check out the values and do a comparison. And I'm only going to do the comparison of the MSU formula with the rain mix that has specifics to rainwater, etc. Seeing as I never use the other MSU formula, also I have no comparison product for well water or city water from rain mix. So here you can see some values. I'm not going to go into each of them separately. I will leave these up long enough for you to see the differences where they can be seen. But if you would like to immerse yourself into what each of the components do, I have linked a video in the description that details the functionalities of each ingredient and why it is that they are or should be in a well-balanced orchid fertilizer and what they do for the orchids as they grow. There are two notable ingredients in the rain mix composition which are missing in the MSU formula and that is sulfate and cobalt. In addition to that I like the fact that the percentage of calcium and magnesium is higher in rain mix than MSU for what that is worth my personal preferences here. The micronutrient values in the MSU formula are a smidge higher than the rain mix, but considering that we're dealing with decimals here, it really is splitting hairs as to which could be, would be considered better if a comparison were to be made. I can say that after two seasons with rain mix, even if I were still financially able to import the MSU formula for reverse osmosis water as I had at the beginning, I would stick with the rain mix. A, because even during the times in my life where money was not an issue, I was not wasteful and I didn't do any squandering. And it makes no sense to me to spend more than double the amount of money for the MSU rainwater formula, etc. that product, plus the high amount for the import fee of MSU to Europe, when there is a product available here that is cheaper to purchase from the price point and is just as effective and b any deficiencies or decline of my orchids that you have witnessed in my collection in the past two years while i was using rain mix has nothing to do with the product other factors are at play one of the main ones being moi yours truly right here getting to know and understand how much fertilizer orchids need as they grow to size is the wonderful learning curve that is the orchid hobby and that takes time but i can also say that if i were growing my orchids in the us i would be using the msu fertilizer both products get my vote of confidence for what that is worth and when asked which one to use I would ask you where do you live and recommend either one of them based on availability and if you are able to source them in your country. I hope that this video was helpful to anyone that would like to try rain mix that cannot get their hands on MSU or don't want to pay the insane shipping fees and import tax. And if you're not in the demographic of where either of these two products are available and watch the video anyway, once again, thank you so much for supporting the channel with your time and view. I so appreciate it. And not to single anyone out that finds themselves in the demographic that can source rain mix and watch the video, know that your time is also appreciated. If you have any questions that I can answer and did not cover in this video, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you have been using rain mix, and have been using any 
other water that is not rainwater or reverse osmosis water. Let me know how the product is working for you and your orchids and if you're satisfied with your orchids progress. Thank you once again to Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents for this wonderful gift. I have also linked her channel in the description. If you would like to get a visual taste of her beautiful orchids, her garden and wonderful expansive succulent collection plus the occasional eye candy that is the Portuguese countryside and culture. I wish you a wonderful day but I attach a condition to that that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.